actual motions of Earth. Our next motion is revolution. And revolution is the path the Earth takes around the Sun. And that path is slightly elliptical, and which means oval shaped. And that um, motion takes 365.25 days to accomplish. So a year is really 365 and a quarter days. Well, if I took 365 and a quarter plus 365 and a quarter plus 365 and a quarter plus 365 and a quarter and added that together after four years, um, a quarter of a day, right, 0.25 of a day is really six hours. What I'm left with is one extra day after four years. So every four years on February 29th, we have what's called a leap year. That's where leap years and leap days come from. It's a result of our imperfect trip around the sun. It's really not uh, 365 days exactly. It's actually a little bit extra. And when we add all that together, this is what we're left with, an extra day that we stuck on February. Lucky February. Every day, the Earth moves one degree in its orbit around the sun. That's really not hard math to figure out. If it's 365 days in a year and a circle is 360 degrees, if I did that division, it would be about one. So the Earth moves about one degree per day as it revolves around the sun. This motion is responsible for yearly changes, things that happen over the course of the year. We're really going to look at two examples um, that are the result of revolution and they also provide pretty good evidence that the Earth is revolving. So our first piece of evidence are that constellations visible in the night sky change over the course of the year due to Earth's rotation. So let's, take a, let's look at an example. If I went outside every night at the same time each month, there would be a different constellation or different group of constellations in the night sky. And that's because the Earth is revolving around the Sun and we are in different places out in space. Okay? Uh, to give you a slightly different interpretation, but probably, you know, just to, to uh, emphasize that point, let's take a look at the Earth here. It's uh, in its orbit around the Sun. And um, right now, if I was on the Earth, the part facing away from the sun would be nighttime, right? That makes sense because the sun's only shining on one half of the earth. And the constellation I'm able to see in this position is the constellation Leo, Leo the lion. Well, if I let earth go through its motion, right? It rotates and revolves. Now the earth is in a new position. And if we're in this position, we don't see Leo the lion. We see Orion, which is a different constellation. And if the Earth rotates again to a new position, well, guess what? We don't see Orion or Leo. We see Ursa Major. And then finally, the Earth starts to complete its trip. And we're in a new position again. And from here, from our vantage point, we see Pegasus. So just to emphasize what I was saying, that because the Earth is revolving around the Sun, we see different constellations in the sky each month. The next piece of evidence that the Earth is revolving around the Sun are seasons. Seasons are directly related to the Earth's tilt and the curved surface of our planet. However, the Earth's revolution is what drives the seasons. Let's take a look at an example of, of what each season looks like. So here's September 22nd, the fall equinox. The sun takes a path across our sky from east to west. This is apparent daily motion. It's really not moving. On December 21st, that's the winter solstice. Same direction, but much lower path, 
much less time out. This is March 21st, exactly equal to the fall equinox in terms of amount of time the sun is out and time it takes the sun to rise and set. And this is June 21st, our longest time of the year, meaning the sun is out for almost 16 hours and it takes a much longer path. So seasons are directly related to the sun's path across our sky, which is controlled by our motion around it. One thing seasons are not, they are not caused by the changing distance between Earth and the sun. That's a misconception. What is caused by the changing distance between the Earth and the sun is something completely different. Um, so let me explain that. The Earth's orbit around the sun, as I said, is not a perfect circle. If it was a perfect circle, that would mean that at all points we're always the same distance from the sun. Well, that's not true. There's a time in the year where we're 152 million kilometers away, and then another time in the year where we're 147 million kilometers away. We refer to those two different times as aphelion, when we're further away, and perihelion when we're closer. Now, if I were to ask you, I'm going to let the video do that, what time of the year do you think perihelion occurs? And what time of the year do you think aphelion occurs? I want you to think about that and answer this question. So now that you've committed to an answer, this might be surprising. Aphelion occurs on July 4th. We are technically further away from the sun when it's the hottest time of the year. We are technically closer to the sun on January 3rd when it's the coldest time of the year. If nothing else, that drives home the point that the distance between the Earth and the sun has no effect on what we would say are seasonal changes. Just to give you a final piece of evidence for how we measure aphelion and perihelion, uh, the diameter of the sun actually changes. When I say diameter, I mean the distance across, right? So the distance across the sun from Earth, if we were viewing the sun through a telescope or some kind of device that cut out some of the glare, uh, 